Howdy spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls. I'm finally back with another project for you guys, but not just any project, a special collaboration with artists I know you all know and love. But not just that, but artists who fit the same extra aesthetic as I do. What's the theme you may ask? Welcome to Burlesque, featuring Keto's Workshop, Mr. Super Customs, and myself. I'm super excited to be part of this collaboration and can't wait for you to see the lineup. Let's take a look. Here you'll see a preview of the performers in today's show. Be sure to check out my friends' videos too after you finish this one. And be sure to hit that subscribe button to show us all some love and let's get started. For the base doll this time, I decided to use an Integrity Toys doll base, as I love the full articulation, including the articulation in the torso, and they have a little bit more range of motion as well. And I'm going to start by body blushing, and you guys will see I'm kind of rushing through this because I don't want to get in trouble by YouTube. Um, and quickly, I just crystallized some underwear for her, so that way she had some undergarments and she wasn't fully naked the entire video. And of course I'm going to sketch in some lines because I did want her to have a nude illusion type bra. And so you'll see here I'm just drawing guidelines to follow so I know where to place the crystals. And again I did want it to be a nude illusion. So there's not going to be any fabric or anything placed here. I want it to look like a skin tone but I'm using the crystals to give the illusion that there is an undergarment there. Once the cups of the bra are completely dried, I go ahead and add crystals around the back as well to look like a strap, and this is what the final product looks like. Now we can go ahead and get started with the face up. Obviously, I'm going to start with my General's Pastel Chalk Pencil in White, which I talk about in every single video, so I won't mention it here. And I'm going to use that to kind of build the whites of the eyes, and normally I do these second and I do the eyeliner first but I was actually really nervous about working on the smaller face of this Integrity Toys doll so I went ahead and started with that and then I did use the darker colors to build out the areas I was more comfortable with i.e. the nostrils, the cupid's bow and then you can see here that I'm going back and now adding the eyeliner now that I'm happy with the shapes of the eye. Obviously with the smaller doll faces it did make me a little bit nervous because you can't get as much detail in but I tried to go a little bit more detailed in the lip area because that was actually the largest area of the doll face and I'm actually going to start with my Spectrum Aqua Blend watercolor pencil in Claret and then follow that up with my Derwent in Cherry and then finalize that with the Caran d'Ache in Rose Pink. And this is probably the most detailed area of the face because I was able to get three colors in there but outside of that that was very nerve-wracking because I'm so used to the monster height head sculpts and face sculpts and having more area to draw things in that a little bit of the detail is lost on these smaller faces but still happy with the outcome. For the eyebrows as well, obviously I knew that she was going to be a blonde and I don't know why this watercolor pencil is so orange because it definitely was like a mustard yellow on the end but when I drew it in they were definitely orange so please ignore that. I promise the eyebrows get better but I knew I couldn't go in with a darker color the way I normally do because again she is going to be blonde so I will lighten that color up as I build up the layers. But here you'll see me using my pan pastel in orange oddly enough even though I do not think that this is orange at all it's just a light color and I use that to almost act as a highlighting or a base powder whenever I'm doing doll faces and it just kind of helps brighten up the high points of the faces. Of course here I'm trying to color correct with my Carrot Dosh watercolor pencil in Burnt Sienna. Like I said the other one was so orange so I went over it with the lighter brown and then I'm actually going in with my cream Carrot Dosh watercolor pencil and kind of building in the small hair strokes to lighten up those eyebrows. And then I'm also going to use that same watercolor pencil and draw in baby hairs which at the end you couldn't even see these so honestly they were probably a waste of time but I like knowing that they're there even if no one can see them and I thought that they came out so cute. I'm unsure where the footage of me coloring her eyes went, but I did use a Caran d'Ache blue watercolor pencil, and then I'm also using a pale blue to kind of help highlight in there, and then that same cream pencil that I've been using almost entirely, and filling in a little bit more brightness in the eyes, and that's just to take some of the blue and add as much depth as I can in such a small area. And honestly, it really didn't do anything. I probably could have just used the lighter blue, and it probably would have showed up a little bit better, but what can you do? Believe it or not, after only three thin layers of Mr. Super Clear, we are adding the eye shines of the eyes, one of the benefits of having a smaller doll face, less materials. Let's move on to the outfit. 
I knew that because my doll was going to be blonde that I wanted to go with an all white outfitting theme. And I'm also gonna be using a bunch of these AB crystals, some iridescent ribbon, and of course some iridescent tool, which you'll see here, and some white leather. And I just used all the white materials I could find as well as the AB crystals to kind of build the outfits around. I had no idea what I was doing, I was just going in for it. But we're gonna go ahead and start building the corset. As you can see here, I have a vintage reproduction Barbie body, and I'm gonna wrap that with some saran wrap, and then I'm actually going to use masking tape to come up with my pattern pieces. I have shown this before in previous tutorials, and I'll make sure to link it up above if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. But like I said, you just wrap the body in saran wrap, and then use masking tape to wrap around that, and this is just to keep the tape from sticking to the doll body. And then drawing out the seam lines using a permanent marker or pencil, whatever you're more comfortable with and that's just gonna create the seam lines that you need to follow. Then using an X-Acto knife, you're gonna go in and cut those seam lines you just drew out. And you can do both sides, but normally I just take one side of whatever I built, whichever side I like the most. You don't have to do both sides because you ideally want them to be a mirror image of each other. So using the same side, make sure that that happens because sometimes they can be a little bit different. Now you'll see me just cleaning up those pattern pieces and this is actually going to be an under bust inspired corset so I did cut the bust line out of that one and then you're just going to take those new pattern pieces that you've created and trace them onto computer paper or whatever paper you have laying around it can be scrap paper as well um, and this is just going to give you actual pattern pieces that are a little bit more sturdy and straight than the masking tape ones. Once you have that pattern transferred to paper, you can go ahead and cut it out and check the fit. And you can see here, I actually had to add little slits to the tops and bottoms just because the Integrity Toys dolls are a little bit curvier than the vintage reproduction Barbie. So you'll just keep that in mind whenever you're cutting it out of your actual fabric you're wanting to use for the corset. If you want, at this point, you can use the full length of the corset that you've created, but I did want it to be a little bit more cropped to fall right at her waist for a tighter fit, and what that's going to do is that's actually going to eliminate a lot of the ease that I was needing with the pattern where I cut those slits because it's going to have a tighter fit now, and the bottom is going to be cut off so you won't actually need that anymore. We're going to transfer that to the leather material, and then we're going to cover that in this iridescent fabric. How nice! But before we can do that, we need to sew up those side seams of the leather material. And this is again just going to reinforce those side seams because it is going to have a little bit of strain put on it. So I think sewing is just a little bit easier. And ideally, you could almost cut this out as one piece. But I don't recommend that just because it is going to have a little bit of shaping to it, as you can see in the bottom hemline of that. So I don't recommend cutting it out as one piece, but you could if you wanted to. And again, we're going to just cut out the iridescent fabric in the same shape as the corset pieces that we've already created. And yes, I hand stitched that to the leather itself. This is what those two side corset pieces look like and you're going to attach it to the center the same way you attach the side seams. I pin it to a piece of cardboard to keep it from folding over, embellish it, and then I create these tiny little sheer bust cups using that sheer fabric that I used to cover the white leather for the corset itself. And then again, I'm going to hand sew on the inside of those cup lines, and this is what it looks like. I love it so much! Then the last thing to do to finish this off is just sewing on little snaps to close it in the back. Originally, I was going to use this feather trim that I found at Joann's and make a cute little feather skirt, but I actually decided to change my mind later, but I left the clips in because I was like, I hand sewed those snaps onto this skirt and I am not wasting that footage. So you guys get to see a little bit of sewing footage in here um, and me struggling to keep the feathers from tangling up in the thread. Not ideal, but I thought it was a cute idea. So enjoy. As I stated before, I was not into this feather skirt, so out with that, and in comes this white fringe, and I thought that the scale just looked better on doll scale, and it fit a little bit more tapered at the waist, and it was just so much better, but I did the exact same thing I did with the feather skirt by sewing on those snaps. 
For those of you who work with Barbie or Integrity toy dolls on a regular basis, Simplicity does actually offer this size doll scale pattern, um, as well as like American Girl and those type, but I thought it was so interesting that they had Barbie patterns. And I'm actually going to be using this vintage reproduction like Barbie coat, I guess. Um, and I am going to extend the sleeves a little bit and the base and make it more of an A-line jacket. And then I even add on in addition to that once I have that pattern adjusted because I knew I wanted it to be an oversized robe. But if you guys didn't know, you can buy Barbie patterns by Simplicity. While I'm adjusting this robe pattern, I want to know from you guys, let me know in the comment section below, do you find the sewing content interesting? Are you interested and in, do these types of tutorials help you? I feel like I always focus more on the sewing than the doll customizing and I just do it because I think that there's not a lot of doll sewing content out there and I think that it's just, for those of you who do customize dolls, I think it's nice to see kind of how to adjust patterns and the fact that you can adjust patterns, you don't have to use it as it comes from the creator or the factory, you can kind of adjust it and make it what you want. As long as you have the sewing skills to back it up, do you guys wanna see more of that or do you want me to include more actual sewing content on the machine or maybe even just like a sewing focused video? Like I said, let me know. And all I'm showing here is obviously I cut the hem straight. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna need a triangular shaped gore to add a train to the back of it. And you can see I've added that here. And again, this is one of those things where I'm like, if you need a tutorial on some of this stuff, I feel like it's hard to problem solve through some of this, but with the sewing experience that I have, I do think it helps. Although I hate the seam line that it created, I think that I love the train and the drama that it added to this robe itself. And then of course, we're gonna go in with crystals and add a ton of crystals. We will have a crystal count at the end of this video, by the way, so don't you worry. For the hair of this custom, I'm actually going to be using the brand Yarn B, and it's their Uber Lux yarn line in the color Ivory, and I'm going to be making that into pre-made wefts. Obviously, I've done this off camera, and I'm going to start by adding what we'll call baby hairs again, and this is just to cover up some of the hair that I wasn't able to get from inside the scalp because the Integrity Toys doll head was actually too hard for me to remove, and I didn't want to damage the head by removing it, so I just left the little stubble that is on there, but it'll be covered up by hair anyway, so it doesn't matter. I've shown the way I apply hair before, but I just go in straight lines all the way up until I get to the part and you apply those going in opposite directions. And then I'm actually going to be using my metal chopstick to curl the hair. This is what the hair looks like after it's curled. And here you can really see the sheen that I was talking about with the Uber Lux collection from Yarn B. Then for a little vintage inspiration, I do pull it to the side and I hairspray it. And that's the thing that I also like about yarn hair is you can hairspray it and it kind of sets the style in almost permanently. And then I'm gonna go in and add this little feather detail to the back of the head because I feel like I see this a lot on burlesque performers and I just thought it added a little bit of that vintage flair that I was looking for. And because enough is never enough for me, I actually add glitter and micro crystals to her hairstyle as well. For the final styling detail, I pull the side ponytail to the side and add a clear rubber band. And of course I had to go back and add even more crystals to the lingerie that I added and you can see it here on the front and the back. We're finally getting down to the final details of the custom, the shoes. And for the base of the shoes, I'm actually using these cool 3D printed clear bases that my friend Sarah from Sugar Lump Gift Shop sent to me. Thank you so much again, Sarah, for these doll base shoes. They work well for Monster High and Integrity Toys, just so you guys know. And I just created these cool sock heels. I wanted to kind of keep with the theme of the nude illusion and something kind of with burlesque being tease based, I wanted to kind of ensure that I kept that theme running through the entire custom itself. So I made these sheer little boots. All right, so let's review everything that we've made up until this point. Obviously we have the corset complete with snaps, the feather skirt that we will not be using, the fringe skirt that we will be using, and of course the white robe complete with crystals and iridescent ruffle at the bottom. But wait, there's more. Because I like the fringe skirt so much and I bought exactly half a yard of this fringe to use for this custom only, I decided why waste the excess that I had and I decided to make a matching top 
Obviously, as you can see in this clip, the skirt was four inches long and the top was six inches. And all I did was I folded the excess fabric in to double over the fringe to give it a little bit more volume. And with that, the custom is complete. And let's take a look at the final photos. Introducing act three of today's show, Lady Pearl. This is her stage name, of course. I'm in love with how she turned out and for the first Integrity Toys custom, I'm quite proud. I want to say a special thank you to my subscriber Stan for sending me this beautiful doll base to use and add to my personal collection. But also a huge thank you to all of you for the more than 14,000 subscribers on this doll customizing journey with me. Thank you so much for the continued support, it means so much to me. Also, don't forget to check out my friends Cito and Mason's videos too. I know where I'm headed next. Again, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like or comment, it really helps me out. To check out more behind the scenes photos, live streams, and content, check me out on Instagram by searching at blank space dolls, where in my world there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, spacers, see you soon. Introducing Axe 3. Wait, Axe? Axe. Also, I forgot to include crystal count. It was 347, which I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. That is not very many crystals, but it's okay. Next time. <laughs>